Dun 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 Hello and welcome to the Be True to You series. I am your host, Kimberly Rochelle. I'm the CEO and founder of Positively Kimberly. I'm also a Southern Earth Fairy, as well as the queen of all butterflies and a tree hugger. Of course, I'm a badass, I'm a boss bitch, and the author of this uh, Confessions of a Self-Declared Princess. Goodness, do I know my own book? <laughs> and of course, the awesome energy trainer and mentality coach. So, in this amazing series, I have the honor of meeting with people um, every single week and figuring out what the heck makes them so unique and so, well, awesome. Today, I have with me Rick Goodman. I am super, super excited because he's one of my nearest and dearest friends of all time. Rick, how are you? My normal routine, I went to work and it was a relatively busy day and then I came home and took care of my dog, did some cleaning, ate some food and now I'm hanging out with you. <laughs> that sounds like a lot of fun. Well, yeah, that? yeah. <laughs> it's nice to have something to do. I couldn't hear you say that again. Um, what are the things that you do that bring you joy? I know you're super talented, so <laughs> what do you like to do? Um, well, obvious to you, but maybe not to people who have no idea who I am, but I just play a lot of music, honestly. Um, that's the main thing that I do on a daily basis that always makes me happy. I've done it my entire life, whether it be piano, guitar, drums, bass, whatever. I just like to play music and sing, and I like to learn things. I'm a super huge nerd. I'm constantly reading Wikipedia articles and scholarly journals and books and watching videos on things like i just try to stay busy keep my mind and my hands busy you know i like to do the same thing i really do well what has been one defining moment in your life since i don't know i've known you for like what 15 20 years now <laughs> mm, yeah like 15 something like that yeah wow time flies um I, I thought a lot about this when you sent me the questions ahead of time, and it's it's kind of hard to tie down one thing, but there's a few things that are tied together, um, which I started with in 2014, I went to Haiti for a couple of weeks, and that was the first time I ever went out of the country, and you kind of have these ideas of what the real world is like, and it pretty much just confirmed everything that I felt, and when I came back, uh, and we landed in the Miami airport, I had kind of like this existential crisis because I realized there was more in that one building than pretty much in the entire country that I had seen. And just like the gross amount of excess that we experience in our everyday life and how people don't really like understand the commodification and the, uh, the way that that interplays with every every little thing that we do and the way that we view people and stuff. And upon dealing with all of this, when I came home, a random kid knocked on my door and gave me a pretty much half-dead puppy who is now my seven-year-old son, bruh. <laughs> and that's he's been my best friend. He absolutely changed my life, um, made me more responsible, made me just, like, care more, uh, made me patient things like that. I mean, you know, it's like I don't have my own son or my own child of any sort, but parenting a dog for seven years, especially one as smart as this one, you know, that it, it puts it puts some responsibility and maturity in you. And uh, upon learning that and dealing with that firsthand, um, I ended up starting a company with a bunch of my best friends where we networked music people and art and did poetry or I didn't care if you if you built tables. I just wanted to know who you are and what you want to do. And I want to connect people to do those things that, that drive them. And that was uh, that was like a big defining thing because I got to actually like look reality in the face and then say, OK, well, this is what I'm going to do now. And that was uh, really cool to take the reins for once instead of just floating along through life. <laughs> I absolutely love that. You know, <laughs> I was actually just talking yesterday about how my dog taught me how to love and really be responsible. I have her with me right now. She's super smart too. <laughs> <laughs> I think all all animals are smart if you just pay attention. It's kind of like people, you know, just 
if you give them space and you try to interact and learn from them, then like you'll you'll understand that they are their own, you know, human being or whatever, even if they're a different species, they're just like you. They're out here living their same life. Definitely. Okay. Well, it sounds like you've had a lot of things happen. What kind of obstacles have you overcome? Um, this is another one I put a lot of thought into and the answer I've come across is it's kind of an obstacle that everyone will face and we kind of, there is no like, oh, I overcame this obstacle. I'll never have to interact with this obstacle again. It's really like, it just gets trickier and trickier because you'll continue to interact with the same obstacle. And I feel like the most common thing for me, at least something that I view as an obstacle is other people's opinions of you or idea of who you are because and I know at least you know from what you have known of me when we uh were hanging out back in the day it's like people constantly kind of just in our environment said no you can't do this you're not anything you won't amount to anything don't try um mm -hmm. just stay at home do nothing blah 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 it's so defeating and like I just constantly hear people say who I am and how I feel and what I can and can't do and what is and isn't possible. And that's just ridiculous. It's absolutely ridiculous. And I think it's a good obstacle to constantly try to overcome because if, if you just accept defeat and let the universe and other people tell you who you are and what to do, at least personally, I feel like that's a life not very well lived. You know what I mean? Like you're not fulfilling yourself and you won't fulfill your environment and you won't fulfill anyone else or you won't reach your goals like that. It's just, I don't understand why people would want to live that way. And I don't know. I think that's just an obstacle we all could, you know, learn to try to overcome on a daily basis. <laughs> oh, definitely. Definitely. I completely agree. So what do you consider to be your biggest talents and strengths? Um, so we've talked about I like to do music and a lot of people think of me as like oh that's Rick he, he plays music he's in a band or blah 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 blah. but I view myself less as an actual like artist or musician and I feel like my real strength lies in networking with people um because uh someone someone told me once that it's not about how good you are at something it's really whether or not you continue to show up and you continue to do the work because the most talented person out there, the most gifted person out there isn't going to amount to much or accomplish anything if they don't drive themselves, if they don't have motivation, if they don't show up, if they don't accept defeat from time to time and keep going anyway. So if you have, you know, just something that you care a lot about, even if you're not very good, if you continue to go at it, then you will be successful. And I'm not the greatest musician, but I'm pretty good at making friends and talking to people and learning all the time. There's always something to talk about. You can talk to anybody about something. I guarantee if you try, there's a conversation there between you. And that, that I feel like it has helped me do pretty much everything, like whether it be music or finding a job or just, I mean, doing absolutely finding a place to live. You just got to be good at at talking to people and listening to people and understanding where boundaries lie. I, I don't know, but I think I would say networking is pretty much my biggest skill and absolutely responsible for anything good <laughs> that I've done. You know, it's funny because I thought you were going to say something about music, but now that you mention it, I'm like, yes, that's actually very, very true. You were like a social butterfly. <laughs> it, it, see, that's the thing is like, I'm not the best drummer. I'm not the best guitarist or singer or songwriter but I'm in like nine bands at a time all the time. I'm in, I'm, I'm booking the shows, you know, or I'm designing merch or, or running the Facebook page or trying to be in the studio recording it. it. Like it forces you to wear many hats and I kind of like being a jack of all trades. Has that networking really helped you um, become who you are now? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I try to get better at it constantly. I like to interact with people and be in those different environments and push myself. And I, I don't think I could be who I am right now, thinking the thoughts I think, even doing what I'm doing with you right now. You know, this is just a part of that. Okay, this is a way to connect. This is a way to, to grow something, to plant a seed. Like this will be something, you know. <laughs> Absolutely love that. <laughs> well, what kind of advice can you give um, the younger generation or anybody else that watches this? 
Uh, I'd say the best piece of advice, I mean, it's a bit cliche, but, you know, things are cliche for a reason sometimes. And it's really just, you know, say yes to the things that you want to say yes to. Say no to the things that you want to say no to. Uh, don't be afraid to follow, like, your inner compass. Because, uh, again, like, people are going to try to box you in. People are going to try to tell you what you can and can't do. At the end of the day, ultimately, you decide what you're capable of and what you're not capable of and what you want to do and what you don't want to do. And again, if you, you let people do that to you and box you in and tell you things, then you're not gonna be in an environment where you thrive. So like my advice would just be really don't be afraid, like be courageous in your daily activities. Like don't be afraid to speak up, close mouth, don't get fed, you know, <laughs> like come to the table, get you a plate and make sure that you're full. Um, you know, like that's something I think everyone could could do. Is, is just take a little bit more autonomy in their life and not be afraid to make mistakes and don't you know, give up afterwards and just learn from that mistake and say, okay, I'll be looking for that next time around and keep going. I love that. Ah, do you have a personal motto? Uh, I, I told my friend about this interview and she laughed when I got to this question because I say this every day and a lot of my friends have actually picked up on this. And it's just to do the work without attachment to the results. Um, I didn't come up with that. It's, it's a lesson from the Bhagavad Gita, one of the oldest, you know, lesson teaching manuals in written history that we know about. But it, it's a great mantra because if you, if you just do the work, if you just continue to show up, if you don't let things affect you or bother your drive or your focus or your vision, then you will complete it. You will see fruition. It will be worth it. You will bear fruit, you know? And doing the work without attachment to the results allows you to keep going. It allows you to continue to hurdle over these obstacles because it doesn't matter if you fail. It doesn't matter if you make mistakes. Just keep showing up, keep going, don't give up. If you gotta change directions, do it. Um, I don't know. I, I think all cliches are great advice. And uh, as, as like a closing note on that, patience is a hell of a virtue. Uh, if you're frustrated about something, maybe just sit down and take a couple of deep breaths, drink a glass of water. Remember that life is a miracle. Uh, you're probably in a building. There's probably central heat and air. There's probably a refrigerator with food. There might be other living creatures of any amount of species in your home. There's plants outside that absorb energy from the sun and we eat that and stay a lot. Like none of this makes sense. It's a gift every moment. It's not worth it to be frustrated. Be patient and don't be attached so hard that it's in your way and just do the work, you know? <laughs> That's so true. I actually, that was one of my biggest struggles was trying to, I got way too attached to my outcomes or the results that I wanted. And whenever I didn't get it, I'd get so mad at myself. Yeah, I th it's easy to do. I mean, we're humans and, you know, uh, like we have our ego, we do get attached. That's, that's part of the fire that drives you to do things like you, your individual existence and interpretation of the universe around you. And it exists for a reason it's just a lesson to try to not get blindsided by it. And that's why, again, it's like, I think the work is the important part, not the results. Because if you get fixated on the results, I think you're going to, it's like chasing the dragon. You know, you're never going to be satiated or fine or okay or happy with any of the results. You're just going to continue to try to fill this void over and over and over again. Mm -hmm. um, but if you just realize that that's life, well, then suddenly it doesn't matter. You like eating. You like being hungry. You like that you get to do this every day because it's a blessing that you're alive and that you have something to do at all. Like learn, go, it's fun. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> I don't know if you know this, but you out of one action actually inspired me to um, start doing yoga. And I don't think yeah. you realized it because of my balance. Do you remember whenever we were walking to shop class that one time? And I don't know if you pushed me or you tripped me. Yes. I, oh my gosh. Yes. And you I took post. like five steps into a wall. Yes. Oh my gosh. I forgot and about I that. Like, oh my God. I need to balance. I need to learn balance. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
Well, that's amazing. I'm glad that I could be uh, an unintentionally positive catalyst. <laughs> <laughs> definitely. You definitely are a blessing. <laughs> You're awesome, Rick. I love you so much. <laughs> Thank you, I love you. I'm glad that you hit me up and wanted to do this. It's nice to be appreciated and asked about things. <laughs> Well, of course. I think you're one of the most awesome people in the in the world. And hey, we grew up together pretty much. So, <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much for joining me. I'm really, really excited about this. I think other people are really going to be excited about hearing everything that you've said, because it's something that anybody can learn from. Well, I hope so. It, it's nice to, you know, know that you make some sort of difference in the world, you know, however, uh, small it may seem you know like again it's just keep doing the work keep planting the seeds if one person that's not you or me sees this and walks away with anything then you know job well done to us like i feel accomplished like that's amazing i'm happy to do it oh yeah me too well thank you so much once again and i'll talk to you later <laughs> bye bye so rick brings up quite a few good points doesn't he if you are someone who's always being told that you can't handle something or that you're not going to amount to anything, then why would you let that hold you down? Just because that other person isn't going to amount to anything doesn't mean that you won't. You know what I mean? I was told from the moment I got into my senior year that I would be nothing. I'd be in my... Are you okay? My little puffers has asthma. Hold on. She's good now. She's fine. But I was told that I would completely be in the exact same town that I was raised in. And for the longest time, it took me five, five to eight years. I don't exactly remember. I'm not doing math right now to um, really get the courage to leave that town. And granted, I was the only one in my family left there. All of my brothers and sisters had gone. Even my dad and stepmom had left. And I was the only one there because I was holding on to what my, um, my teacher had told me. So don't let anybody else hold you down. And remember that we are super blessed. Everything that we have around us. I have light in here. Blessed, right? I'm in a building and that's shelter for me. Blessed. I have covers that I'm sitting on right now. <laughs> blessed, right? Just don't take for granted all of the things that that we have in front of us because they're meant for us for a reason. So that's all I have right now. Make sure um, to check out Rick and I should be able to post a Facebook link so you can find him and all of his awesome music. And he's a little modest. He's really good at what he does, let me tell you. So, <laughs> um, and you can find him and all of his music and I'll see you guys later. Bye.